I'm a little bee. I'm a little bee. I'm just a little bee and I got a big butt. Looking at the flowers, living my day. Back to- oh. Uh. Hi. A design video and an academic paper video, all in like, a span of two weeks? What kind of content is this? This is not what you subscribe for, but of course, I have other interests in life, and I'd like to share this with you. Now, I don't think that I'm very good at design, but, you know, I've got a couple ideas, and you know what, I might as well share them, because there's a lot to do in Minecraft other than what I usually like doing, which is, well, mining. So let's take a moment, oh, that's spoilers, <laughs> let's take a moment and talk about color theory, and how I play my game of Minecraft, because most of the time, this is where you'll find me. And if you can see the minimap in the corner there, well, I like mining. To the point where my friends and I usually have roles where I'm the guy that gets the materials, you know, dig, dig, and they do the building. But you know what? Sometimes I like to flex my creative muscle, and instead of just doing monotonous tasks and listening to podcasts, sometimes I like to build, and that involves a lot of thinking and flexing that creative muscle that I really don't get a chance to do very often. By the way, the mod pack I'm using is called Vault Hunters. It's a bit of a big mod pack, but if you've got friends, it's super fun. So try it out. Now, of course, this is a video on color theory, so I'm not going to talk too much about Vault Hunters, but we can talk about that some other time if you like this kind of video. Oh, I'm lost. Aha, uh -huh, I was just joking. I know exactly where I am. This is my mine. It's just, uh, right here? Yeah, 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 cool, 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 cool. I guess this is going to be a bit of an unorthodox video, where, you know, there's a bit of design ideas, and maybe just a little bit of a, hey, where has he been for the last week? Because I usually take about a week off every time I do something like a big video, because, you know, I need that time to recharge. And I've been playing Minecraft for 10 years, so this is definitely a good brain-off kind of game for me. Not completely head-empty brain-off kind of idea, but I've got some things to do. And those things are very varied. And it really depends on how I'm feeling that day. I didn't actually make this, but this is something that I would typically make. It's very technical, very logical. But again, this is design. So we're going to stick away from the, the uh, you know, AFK farming and the, the observer clock sugarcane farms, you know, things like that. We're going to go to designing now. Because there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of literature that says you should probably... Uh, uh, Pay no attention to that. It's um, it's a family heirloom. There's a lot, I mean, I mean a lot of research that says you need to vary your thought. Otherwise, you're going to get kind of shoehorned into an idea or thought process. And that's never good for, like, you know, growing. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, sometimes you got to put yourself through the paces. Sometimes you got to really, really hurt your brain so it can grow a little bit more. So here we are. That's that's the topic. That's the idea. Um, let's get some more light so it's... Let's just... There we go. This is completely normal. Completely natural. Alright, so let me go through what my design process was for this particular world that we made. Because I, I tried to do something a little bit different. The idea was I wanted to integrate test-driven development and design into one cohesive mix. So as opposed to something like this where, you know, it's a monument and it's beautiful and it has a purpose and function and it's perfectly designed and everything about it is perfect. I wanted to make it so that it's a growing and ever-evolving structure that I've created. And you can kind of see it. And let me let me do a bit of a flyaway so you can see it a little bit better. It's not done, but uh, this is just progress point number one. If you want to see more, then let me know. But you can see there's parts to it. There's this part and that part and that! Uh, there's this part and... There's this little village down here, and there's a little enchanter table, because we needed it, and it should probably have its own room, but right now it doesn't. And there's a little structure beyond this, where we have our bees, and then there's this... Ow. There's also this structure, which is kind of a flex, but also really pe but also really pretty. And they all have a purpose. This is to go to the nether. This is to go... Well, that is to go to sleep. There's a horse pen below. Ow for our uh, questionably colored cow and my my prized horse, which can't jump. Here, it's obviously about storage, and this is obviously about smelting. It's all got its purpose, and the purpose kind of creates the form. And I hope that's not super crazy to think about, but it is a little bit odd. It's called test-driven development, where you have a problem, 
or a test, and then you create a solution for that problem, and nothing else can be made. Which is a little difficult when you're talking about, you know, design, where it doesn't really have a problem that it's usually solving. Usually, you want something, and then you make it. But there are definitely things in this world that, you know, why is this wall so thick? It's not just that I wanted a really thick wall, it's that if I wanted to in the future, I have all the space behind the actual storage units, which are right, right there, I can use those later. But I can also attach hoppers and feed it with other things if I wanted to. And there's some relics of the past when we wanted, when we need to move the villagers out of their hiding hole. Uh, maybe we should get rid of that for now. But inside here, it makes sense, and there's a couple flaws, of course, but it's the back-end system, so it doesn't really need to be perfect. Now, of course, that's function. But the form was decided because of the function, and when it just started, this was all we had. There was no second floor, it just kind of cut off. It was a square, and it's called the garage. Like, here's a waypoint. We called it the garage, because it looks like a garage. It, it has a bunch of stuff in it, and it has purpose. Storage. And that was it. This questionably small room is a room. There's nothing else other than cake and a globe and a head on the wall and a bed and some other stuff. But that's that's more because I ran out of storage. So as you're building, of course, that kind of influences how things are built. It's a it's a it's a methodology. You don't just say, oh, I'm going to go build a big tree fort. It's more like I need a tree fort because I would like to live in the trees. Or maybe that's a great way to use a large amount of wood. Like, there's always a, a before than the after. And that's a really, it's a really weird way of explaining it because, you know, it's, it's design. Again, I'm going to say this a lot during this video, but it's a design thing. It's not a test driven development thing, but I'm trying to mesh them together. So where do we go from there? Well, we then had villagers and we had no place for them. <laughs> they were in the wall. Like I said, they were, they were in that wall. No kidding, there was like 10 of them in there. So we had to create something to hold the villagers, which was the second floor. So this was part of the design. There was a house here, there were no steps, but we needed a second floor entrance. So these steps were created and a bit of fencing was added to what was otherwise just a furnace array. These pillars were added for support, I think before, but they kind of informed the future function. There was already an overhang. It looked like a, like a it looked like a gas station before, but that was the function at the time. We didn't change the function to include a walkway. So then there was a fence and some sort of decorative walkway, and of course the villagers live in there. And they're very loud people. There's a lot of them, and it used to just be one floor, but then they ran out of space. So then we added oh, move, 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 move. We, we added another floor, and that's where all the librarians live. And it's because we had so many villagers that the form, uh, the form, uh, the form had to change. Therefore, there was a test that was done, i.e. there was no space for the villagers. Therefore, form did not meet function. There was a, a, a missing component. So we updated it, and then there's now a second floor. Now, of course, with every breeder, there has to be a way to make better trades. And I will admit this is a bit extravagant. It was more of like an executions ring than anything else. Hey, Endermen are griefing me. But now we have, you know, a prison. <laughs> but again, form function. So we needed a place to convert villagers. This is a great place to convert villagers. Where else? What else do you need? Well, you need a friend. Uh, I don't remember what I named him but it's probably something really dumb, so he's gonna stay behind the glass. So then we put this guy here, and then they go, ah, wow, wow, and then you hit the button, and there they go. Now, of course, I'll convert him back later, but that takes 20 minutes, so now we have the form and the function are meeting again. It's it's a system, and I'm guessing this seems a little rambly at this point. Like, what's the point of this? <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to tell us? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. But I hope that through the mess and through the myriad of decisions that I made, you can see a new way of thinking. It's test-driven. It's, it's a form that meets the function that's required. Which leads me to the, you know, the next part. This. Um, the next part is that we need more space. So, first off, this was completely set up just for Vault Hunters. That's the mod pack we're using. We needed a space for all of the ores. I like ore piles. It's pretty. It's beautiful. It shows off your wealth. And um, before <laughs> before you have fortune pickaxes, it's a great way to hold on to resources, and then you get more later. So I made this. I made a second 
or I guess a third floor, that has an overhang attachment. It brings these two buildings together. Before then, they were separate. So it kind of looked like, let's just angle the camera up. It looked like this, or I guess, I guess you can just forget the top. You can see that there was two separate buildings connected. It, it was a, a form and function thing, it, but it's still one homogenous unit. I should probably put another layer on the bottom. That's, <laughs> I never thought that there'd be hay bales sticking out. So what does this give us? Well, it's not perfect, but it's beautiful. Or at least I think it's beautiful. And it's that kind of idea that is informing all of my color theory decisions. We started with this. We started with spruce planks and a little bit of polished blackstone. That was it. Then we added a little bit of this uh, scoria. It's a different item, but you could definitely use like... If you wanted to stay vanilla, you could use something like... Mm, nether brick. Nether brick would work really well here. And then we said, okay, well, spruce and blackstone. Well, let's continue it for the second floor. So we have a blackstone second floor. And maybe we'll bring the reds, whether it's nether brick or scoria cobblestone, let's bring it into this building, and that'll be a bedroom. And then, okay, well, the floor out here is birch, because it accents will with the spruce. So let's wrap that. <laughs> We've actually got a little bit of willow plank here, like some fake grass almost. So let's wrap that and bring it up the stairs, and then a little bit more cobblestone, because that's the roof. And then we're going back to the cypress, which is just a slightly off color. You can see, like, here's cypress, and then birch. Very similar, but you get that kind of color gradient happening. It's very subtle, very, very subtle. But it then leads up to here, and then you've got this like stripped birch log. So again, we're changing colors from cypress to birch. And then we know that this birch will work well with spruce. So then we've got this set up. And then, of course, when we make this addition, which was thereafter, we've got soapstone, which again, we could use something like nether brick or, or maybe just blackstone cobblestone or uh, whatever the, the base colors are. You don't have to use these ones, but it's it's the color theory. But it informed the decision. We have spruce as the base color, we've got a bit of blackstone and soapstone. And then, because we want to continue with that scoria cobblestone look, we have this darker purple. Which is a type of tree that, again, it's part of the mod pack, but ether wood. You could use something, again, like nether brick or something to tie these colors together. And then we say, okay, well, ether brick has this beautiful almost turquoisey look inside stay over there <laughs> you're not welcome here but this wood has this like beautiful green color very similar to the the blue wood of the warped fungus or the warped wood stems so let's use that let's integrate that in and add a second floor and if you if you really look let's go up to the top floor ow this stuff right here isn't ether this is warped fence this is vanilla but it works really well with the ether planks, and it works really well with another vanilla thing, the, uh, those things, what are the <laughs> shroom lights, and then the warped fungus. So we're playing with colors that work well together, and then it's informing the next future decision. And it's all color theory, and I really wanted to, really, like, have that kind of experience where, yeah, it doesn't really fit very well if you were like, oh, well, this doesn't fit very well with the other thing, but as a test-driven development thing where we say this needs to build out because, you know, we need it. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, actually. It's, it's an entire methodology for coding, but it doesn't map well to design, usually. That's where Minecraft's a little different, because, you know, you get these very integrated worlds where you are mining and crafting. It's a, I don't know, a design thing. But at the same time, you have to think about the function. You're not just here to create things, you're here to build and to design things. That's half of the game, like literally half the game. So where does this lead me now? Well, I've now said that I need to grow out. I need more space, more development. I want to pull this structure, which again, this is a very early system. And his idea was just to be test driven, like we needed to get to the nether. Therefore, let's build a structure that looks nice, that gets to the nether. It's time to update that. We need to make this fit the build again. That's our problem. It, it works, but it doesn't work anymore. Whoa! Saw my life flash before my eyes. So then we revise our ideas. We say, well, this is looking really nice. Don't want to touch this. I had an idea that I wanted something on the hill, which we've already done, so this side's done. And then up here, well, this is a roof. I don't really want to add anything else. The trees look nice, so it's not staying. Therefore, let's break our knees and expand a little bit. So now we've got this structure. 
And of course, it's not done. This is again progress one. But there will be something here. Maybe this will hold the enchanting table that is otherwise just kind of it's just chilling in the middle of the the square. Again, this was just function and not so much form. We had to have a an enchanting table. Therefore, we added an enchanting table. But now we have all this space in here to, you know, work and design and play. And maybe that means this room, which again, it was just a spot to live, becomes a larger spot to live. If that's what the function is that needs to be done, then we can inform our form to meet that function. So where does that leave me? Well, actually, you know what? Maybe the cows are why I'm lagging. Hmm. Well, I'm left in a bit of a weird situation where now I'm kind of building again. The form and the function don't really make sense anymore. Ooh, that was weird. Next up, of course, is this the large room, and then the thing on top, and then after that, I have plans to pull this off the ground. This, again, a relic of the past at this point. This will be in the air, because it has to fit the build and design. By the way, that's a drown farm up there. Maybe that, that'll be something that we do together, but I don't know yet. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff, and maybe that'll be part of our build, or maybe that'll be part of the channel. Maybe the me putting blocks in walls is something that people really like, and we can play around with that idea. All I know is that this idea, this design process, it's not something that's very common for me to do, so I like to really work with it when I can. And if it means pulling a bit of all-nighter kind of action and not getting a lot of videos out, that's, that's, it's a design thing. You don't, there's no free lunch with the design. You have to put it in the work. And it's these kinds of design decisions that really will influence my thinking in the future, so I want to put effort into it, and maybe you can come along with that. I really enjoy it. It's a good way of thinking differently. Like, does this look better than polish? Does the smooth basalt that is kind of accentuating the verticality of the structure, does it make sense for the entire build? And I think it does. I think that's a good way to take this. But overall, does it work out together? And that's, that's the real tricky part. Can we make it so that this green matches with that green? Which, if you just look at this color and match it with those colors like this, like, let's just pull it up like that, it kind of clashes. But it also doesn't if you put in the right colors and the right textures and the right distance between them. So that's where I've been. It's been a bit of a journey. It's been about a week. And like I said, I do tend to disappear every now and then to do these kinds of things. But of course, you can come along with me and see how it goes. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, that I haven't done yet. And I'm happy to share that with you. But, you know, it's going to be a bit different. It's going to be sporadic. And this is what I do in my spare time when I'm not doing other things that I'm, you know, recording. A lot of time goes into these builds. Let's just check these statistics. Time played. 8.86 days. And only one of, no, two of those are overnight days. So I'm probably looking at about six days of actual playtime. Just for this and this and everything we've done in the nether and the end and the mob grinders and, you know, like... Like, this took a while, because it's it's water in the sky, and that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> and then we've got a gunpowder farm, like... But we'll go into those, if you like those kinds of things, in a different video. For now, it's just form, and how it kind of has to follow with function. Or, if you're doing test-driven development, how they mesh together and how one problem informs a solution. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit wonky to think about, but... So is test-driven development, so... That's more or less all I have to talk about today. It's just a quick video to kind of show you where I've been and where I'm going. Hopefully not into a wall, but as you can see, I'm not very good at flying backwards. And if you really like things like, you know, mob farms or technical redstone or anything weird like that, that's another thing we can talk about and have videos on, but I'm not very good at that stuff. I barely understand redstone as it is. This is literally just a water column. Now where I go from here, I'm not sure. And I don't think I have any way of telling you whether I, I'm going to continue this series or if this is just a one-off, but at least you now know that there's other things that you can do other than video games that are still video games. Design, thinking, analytical and creative matching, there's, there's so much. Color theory. All you have to do is kind of look a little bit outside the box or say to yourself, what can I do that's different than the rest? Can I include some orange? Can I include some green? Can I... Well, it doesn't have to be all about color, of course, but that's what I mean. It's It, it can literally be anything. Anything that you like to do and every, anything that will produce a better version of you. That's that's the goal, I hope. I hope for everybody that's the goal, but I mean, I'm just a duck, so I don't really know what I'm talking about. And of course, let me know, again, if you like this stuff. 
Maybe next time there will be more cows, but uh, they were causing a bit of lag, so they had to go. And if you have any suggestions for the build or comments or design ideas or theories or philosophies that you want to try out, let me know, and maybe I'll try and integrate those into the next bit of it. Again, it's all about design philosophy. It's me trying to make sense of the things that I'm looking at. And Minecraft is very good at making you realize that you're not very good at looking at things. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, in Minecraft that doesn't just make sense. Like, why is a flat sheet of basalt good if it's a long structure, but not if it's just a, you know, a floor or a single layer? Why do you need to mix colors and mix cracked stone brick with other things to kind of explain that this is a foundational support system that's you know, old and part of the structure itself, even though it was totally added way later. We're storytellers. At the end of the day, I'm a storyteller. Did the inclusion of the cracked blackstone make sense? Does it show that this is part of the old structure, even though it's new? I don't know. That's for you to decide. And when this project is finally finished, maybe I'll come back to it and say, here is what I've done. And you can tell me if it makes sense or not. But for now, that's about it for me. Of course, thank you so much for watching these rather unorthodox videos that kind of sporadically get made. Um, there is more coming, there's more mini motorways, there's more Darkest Dungeon, there's more everything, and so many more games on the horizon. More Potion Craft, Frostpunk 2 will be coming out soon, and maybe there will be a couple streams of this. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go to bed. Um, how do I get into bed in this? I'm gonna go to bed. Take care, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.